Welcome to October. It's time to give thanks here on Flag for Flavor. Happy Thanksgiving weekend to all of my Canadian listeners. With the recent chaos, I thought that this was the perfect time to be thankful for family, friends. Uh, I think it's a very important weekend, and it's just a good time for us to kind of reset our focus for what should be important. And with food, wine, and travel as this podcast theme and as passions of mine in life, it was a good starting point for me to stop and kind of readdress and be thankful for all of these luxuries uh, that I surround myself every day. I'm thankful for a kitchen that I can cook in, that has food to eat, uh, that I can share with others in my home. I am thankful for the meals that I can have with my family and friends. And some of those meals are some of the best times I've ever had. I'm thankful for the people in my life who can just sit and enjoy a bottle of wine with me. I'm thankful for the people who make and sell wine and work very hard and who have always welcomed me into their world and shared what they know along with their personal stories. I'm thankful that I've had the opportunity to travel throughout my city, my province, my country, and feel blessed that I can see so many parts of the world and meet so many amazing and kind people along the way. This time of year is to focus on others. So I really wanted to spend most of this episode introducing you to the who, what, and why of my local food bank. It's a way to remind us that there are others who are less fortunate or who just need that temporary help at this time of the year. So I called my old friend and college alumni, Dan Exelon. He's the executive director of the Sudbury Food Bank. And I wanted to get some of my questions answered about all the ways we can help them this season. I guess I wanted to find out, would people be surprised to find out who's using a food bank right now? Absolutely. There'd be, you'd be astonished at who's using a food bank right now. You really would. Uh, that's one of the reasons why all volunteers sign a non-disclosure policy, because it's very likely you could see your neighbor in your local food bank. And of course, we just can't have that going no. out there. Of you course. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, is. <laughs> Part of the training of the food bank volunteer, we, when we train food bank volunteers, we take them through these little courses. And one of the questions of the course is, how would you handle a person that's living on the streets come into your office? And they have fabulous answers to how they would this be Mr. and Mrs. It wouldn't be a number, it'd be polite, it would be respectful and everything like mm-hmm. that. And they can just take up your whole training session, talk about how great that is. And you say, that's wonderful. How about the woman that came in a Cadillac wearing a fur coat? And their faces literally go blank. And like they, they say exactly the same way, and it's kind—it's of, like it looks up in their eyes, right? Because because we're not here to judge. We don't have any idea why you're coming to the food bank. Haven't got a clue. That's right. Could be you had a cat business. Could be you were in an abusive relationship. Could be you lost your job in Canada. You lose your job. You're six weeks from your first check. That's fired. That's fired right. or not, most people live within three paychecks of being destitute. In Canada, and uh, not that that's a bad thing. That's just the way our economy and our culture works. Mm-hmm. So you're going six weeks without any funds. Things are going to happen. So then you see people that have, let's say, a nice car or something like that. Well, if they're in trouble, why don't they sell their car? Well, then they can't go to work. Then they can't be <laughs> like, like you know. So, so you can't get into those conversations. You come to us for help, you get help. That's right. And that's the way it works. And there's no reason we don't care why you're there. If you're looking for the help, you get the help. And we don't judge the person that comes in the door. We just try to give them the hand up if we can. Now, the food bank hand up is food. Everybody has the right to a proper place to live, good security, good health, and uh, and uh, job security and food. 
we only focus on one of those four pillars and that's food. We give you food and we don't give you food week after week. We give you food to help you through that one time in the month when there's too much money at the end of the month. That's the only time when we actually supply you with food. So technically most people use food banks about once a month. We say that 60,000 people use food banks or, or meal providers in the city of Sudbury, okay? okay? Now this figure, people say, well, that's a devastating figure, but yes and no, it is and it isn't. Because a lot of the people we help are the students in the schools, because we do breakfast programs, we do after school programs. The idea is you can't learn if you're hungry. You so can't. if you wind up, if you wind up getting a good nutritional breakfast, you get more out of your classes, therefore you get more out of your schooling, therefore you get more out of life and, you, and the cycle of poverty ends. So that's kind of the theory. So a lot of our young people are handled through those programs. So that's why we, we uh, serve about 5,547 adults and the rest are children, whether they be in families that need help or children in schools or, or, or whatever, that's kind of what we, what we do with them. So, uh, and so that's basically the theory behind the food bank. And, uh, and uh, the problem is, is that food banks tend to have this um, opinion, people's pride gets in the way. Yes. They don't want to use food banks, or there's somebody worse off than them, or there's somebody. Uh, you know, uh, now that I'm working in food banks and I absolutely love what I do, I realized probably my family should have used food banks. Six kids, dad's a taxi driver, loving family, wonderful background, but you know, nutrition wise and such, it probably would have been pretty smart to <laughs> use your food. Mm -hmm. But the view in our household was, well, there's other people that are worse than us. But you know what? Let me put it to you this way. If you're a mother of three kids, what is your first thought when you're hungry? Make sure your kids have supper. That's right. Okay, here's the point. If all your kids have supper, but you get sick, where do they get their next supper? You know what I mean? So you, right. have to, you have to be prepared to understand that we are a service. If you're sick, you call your doctor. If you get a fire, you call the fire department. If you have a, 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 a security or legal issue, you call the police. You know, you go to the hospital if you're ill. I mean, you, you go to the clinic. You, you're the same thing. We are a service. We are here. We are here to help you. We are a free service. Yes. There's no obligation to do anything that when you come here. And the reason why I put that into the conversation is there's no obligation to come here. But guess what? When we say 16,000 people, as I said previously in the start, it's not the same 16,000 people. We may have a person once, maybe twice, you know, maybe for a little longer time. But then that person gets back on track and we don't help them anymore. Well, guess what happens to that person when we don't help them anymore? they come back and they volunteer or they give food or they give funds to the food bank because they remember what they've lived through because anybody's been hungry at one time in life, whether through their own choice, oh, I'm just gonna skip lunch because I have work to do, yes. or a religious aspect, or that everybody's been hungry. You understand what a pain of hunger is. It doesn't matter who you are. At some point in your life, you've been hungry. If you're blessed, you'll be able to take care of it. If you're not, that's why we're here, mm -hmm. okay? So, so what that allows the food bank to do, it allows the food bank to operate with no government funding. So there's no government funding at the food bank. We simply, you know, work on the, the, the community. And that's what I pride myself with Sudburyans and the Sudbury community. We are here as a service because Sudbury has made the decision that no one's gonna go hungry in their community. They're, the suffering's made that decision. Now, not a government, not a, not a policy, not a procedure, just the people made that decision. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here. And we're very blessed to be in the community that we're in, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I said it's, uh, it's one of the reasons that I've sort of stuck around, and I'm not going anywhere either. Oh, my God. You've been with us for years <laughs> as a volunteer, and I appreciate that. Well, best of luck on this new endeavor. Oh, thank, thank you. you it's a lot of fun. I get to come and chat with you again. <laughs> right on. So that gives you a little bit about the who uses the food bank. So before we get into the what, meaning the foods that are donated or collected at the food bank, because it's food, I thought I would treat you to some food recipes. So I don't like to do the standard dinner plan for Thanksgiving. I'm not that much of a traditionalist, aside from gathering with friends and family on this weekend. Aside from that, I always like to do something a little bit different. So a number of years ago, I started by creating a different side dish, kind of a spin off of a few things that I saw online back in the day, but it's a vegetarian shepherd's pie. 
So it is all kinds of different root vegetables, squash, mushrooms, and it's basically that's the filling part that would take care of the um, the base. And then it's topped with a blend of mashed sweet potatoes and then regular mashed potatoes. So you can actually get creative using your piping bag and make designs and stuff on the top. And then it's baked in the oven and it's served as just the side dish. So instead of having the turnip, the carrots, the mashed potatoes, you can actually just have this side dish along with your turkey. So I'm a big proponent of having a less is more kind of an attitude when it comes to meal planning, especially if you're going to be sitting down and joining your guests. So the fact that I can have maybe some veggies and a couple of apps and then just the turkey and the side dish is perfect for me. So if you like that recipe, I've included the link to that one on the show notes and I've also given you a few others. Um, So you'll have a few ideas for appetizers. I gave you a great soup recipe. I also gave you um, one of my favorite desserts that I'm going to make this weekend. It is a pumpkin roulade. So if you didn't know what a roulade is, it is almost like a like a jelly roll cake would be the great way to describe it. But instead of jelly for the filling, it is the pumpkin cake and the filling is made with mascarpone cream cheese and um, whipped cream and uh, crystallized chopped ginger. The mixture of the ginger and the cream inside the cake and anyways, you'll thank me. I also made notes in the recipe to double up on the cream to serve on the side. Um, It's not just a great dessert option to change up that usual pumpkin pie, but it's also a great one for the Christmas holidays too, because it does kind of look like that Yule log that you're used to seeing on the center of dinner tables um, at Christmas. So if you like those ones, I think there's about five or six. I also included uh, a couple little suggestions on what to do with your turkey and potatoes leftovers. There's all kinds of fun things you can do with them. That is if you have leftovers, right? Okay, so now we're going to go into the what. So I really wanted to ask Dan, because if this is the time of year where the food banks are collecting things, my question was, what exactly are those things? I wanted to also ask, um, just because I'm the food girl, um, what kind of uh, food donations, because some people are always asking, like, well, I don't know what to donate. Mm -hmm. You have all of these food drives and things that are coming up this fall, especially with the students. What kind of things should they be looking for in their pantries? I'm always assuming that they might do the same thing that I do, is I open up my cupboard and I think, okay, I don't need all of this. Mm -hmm. I do want to donate. But oh, are they going to take, oh, do they really want this? Oh, I'm not sure about this. Right. So what kind of things should people be focusing on that you know that really is needed here? Well, the big thing that goes with me here is like, it's, it's an interesting question you've asked because the big thing that's needed here is proteins, for okay. example, okay? Yes. okay? However, protein would not necessarily be the right answer. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. Uh, we can never have enough peanut butter, but the rules on where peanut butter can and cannot be used anymore are make a substantial impact on it. However, from a family perspective, peanut butter is one of the best proteins you can have. It That's has right. everything in it. Yes. If if you have that, if you have the ability to consume it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so so. That's an example. The, the the canned tunas and everything. That the reason why you, things like canned tunas, canned hams, and kind of that is because, depending on what else you get when you come to a food bank and get your basket, you can spread that meal out, right? Like yes. like the, a can of tuna does not have to be a sandwich. It could be a good base for a nice pasta salad with healthy just... mayonnaise, a couple of peppers in there, yep. and it's actually very nutritional. You and we can add my it. son on a previous podcast. Mm-hmm. I was teasing him, but I used to put tuna in his spaghetti sauce. <laughs> there you go. Because that's an old Italian thing. Uh, you know what? <laughs> tuna in a spaghetti sauce is actually one of the classes we teach Yay! at our community <laughs> kitchen. And it's amazing that people say, are you kidding me? But it's fantastic. Yep. I mean, it's a lot cheaper than a pound of hamburger that's or right. a pound of pork. Mm-hmm. It's certainly healthier than hamburger. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can always question whether fish or pork is a better deal. A lot of people feel fish is a better pork, but either way, they're both better than hamburger in health-wise. That's anyways. right. And they certainly add a unique taste, and it's just wonderful. And, it's, and it actually takes away, for people who don't like the taste of canned ham or something, well, or, exactly. or canned tuna, it's not as fishy when it's in a tomato exactly. sauce with the vegetables. And, exactly. It's yeah. delicious. So we actually do that session here. Oh, so it's good. Quite I'm going to see. <laughs> Alex, if you're listening, see, I wasn't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so, but the big three I've always been in food banks has been uh, the pasta, the pasta sauces, and the beans. That's the big three. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, another example of what I'm talking about is uh, we often have. Uh, we often have uh, turkeys and ham donated through Thanksgiving and, oh, and nice. Christmas, okay. right? And they're very important to us. We don't want to go on them, but they may not necessarily be good for everybody that we're dealing with. For example, if it's a homeless person or if it's a person with a bachelor pad or something like that, where are they going to cook a turkey? Ex- so, okay. you know what I mean? So, this kind of... So that's why the proteins in the can become a lot more prominent there. Uh, everybody's against the bottled water. I mean, I'm not a big proponent of bottled water myself, but if you're on the street or something, it's much easier to supply you with a bottle of sealed water Correct. than it is to try to get you a you know, a glass or a cup. Not to mention, you have the bottle afterwards. There's lots of fountains around. So Exactly. You know, so people shouldn't be shying away from bottled water. water. Well, I don't want to get the no, no. the but environmentalist I'm, up in arms, but, I mean, there is some benefit, at least at the food bank level, for having bottled water to distribute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but basically, I think the policy you look at, uh, the philosophy you look at is is... Anything you need in your house, we need at the food bank. Because we don't just do food, right? You, you do the diapers, you do the baby food, you do the toilet articles, See, you, do the, you do the, you do the, uh, the, um, the um, beauty care. I mean, I mean we don't, not, not we do a whole lot of makeup and such, but hygiene products. If someone's going to the food bank looking for a job, I think it's kind of important that they have a soap and deodorant yes. etc so maybe that's the kind of things that people always forget about they so not they, don't, they don't always have to go and look in their kitchen exactly. there might be other things in their house that can also be absolutely, utilized absolutely absolutely toothpaste is a big one toothpaste oh, is a see? big one toothbrushes is a big one I mean may I ask uh, ask anybody in the world you're probably using some toothbrush that's your favorite whether it's electrical or whether it's not mm-hmm. every time you go to the dentist you get a toothbrush what do you do with those there's probably a thousand toothbrushes out there in the Sudbury region that's right sitting in cupboards in bathrooms that we could use as long as they're sealed and, and that's new, right we couldn't lose using those they'd be fantastic to have those but there they are you know what about the uh, your, your for example uh, the the souvenirs that you might uh get when you're not visiting like the little bars of soap and the little bottle of shampoos you know the stuff so the, the, the souvenir stuff that's just everywhere if you're yes. when you're in hotels and such you know how do people have that stuff hanging around yeah, you yeah. know what I mean if you're, if you're a street person you're going to the Elgo Street Mission you're getting a good meal then you're having a shower it might be kind of cool to have a nice little bottle of shampoo and a bar of soap that you could oh use especially and, and oh not to mention I mean um, a lot of the people who are using those services are out job hunting on an ongoing basis job hunting on an ongoing so they need basis. things they like need yeah that. toothbrush and deodorant yeah, and yeah. no oh that's a good that's a good thing to have so I'm let's, gonna make a list of all this stuff okay let's take it one step further okay, okay? Uh, if you're in my household my dogs are my family okay <gasps> oh, so if somebody is yes. hungry should they have to give up their cat or their dog or their hamster I'm not quite sure why people have fish as a pet but <laughs> some people do you know but uh, you know uh, the, uh, like like so dog food when you come in with your family and we take care of yourself and everybody in your family should we take care of your dog your bird your hamster your cat too we do to the best of our ability so any of that stuff is very happy we have to have organizations that actually do their food drive strictly for baby food or strictly for pet supplies oh, okay. they actually that's why they that's how they run their campaign everything is important so i think getting back after this lengthy discussion basically if you need it in your house we need it here With all this talk about food, it sounds like the perfect time for fly in my soup. So this is the time of the episode where I get to rant a little bit. So even though we're talking about, you know, altruistic and charitable things like donating and volunteering for a food bank, I wanted to talk a little bit about food waste. I have basically built up this uh, plan that I use when I'm cooking for myself back when I used to run the catering business, uh, when I do my cooking classes, I go through great lengths to try to use up as much as I possibly can. And it pains me when I have to throw food out because it's rotten and I make a point of putting it in my composter. But the idea of having food that I have to 
throw away at any time. It makes me absolutely livid. So I've learned all these tricks. So I'll, I'll share a couple of them with you. One of them has to do with using a starch as a base. So pasta, rice, those are kind of things I keep as staples in my pantry. And one of the favorite things I like to do, especially because I do work at home occasionally, um, I used to more often, so I think that's why I got into this habit. You can basically take just about any leftovers and throw it in a pasta. You can fry it up in a pan and serve it over rice. You can freeze the individual components together so that at some point you can pull them off to do whatever. So think of starch bases. So I'll have pre-made flatbreads in my freezer. I will have, maybe I didn't need that entire baguette last weekend, so I'll take half of it, wrap it really well and leave it in the freezer, and I can take it out and do some kind of a roasted vegetable sandwich to get rid of some veggies. Or I can make uh, little baguettes or crostinis if I'm having um, people over on the weekend. Or I can, yes, toss it into pasta, put it over rice, um, depending on what vegetables or meats they are, make a great soup or stew or chili. Um, I basically took the time to have all these containers and using that in Ziploc bags, and I will put everything in the freezer and then pull things out when you need to. Um, I'll add a few little tips or recipes um, on the show notes. That's stephaniepichet.ca slash flavor eight for today's uh, show notes. So again, if you just started listening to us and you're not quite sure of the actual spelling, again, it's flavor spelt the Canadian way, F-L-A-V-O-U-R-8. Or if you wanted to, you can just go to stephaniepichet.ca, look for the podcast Flying for Flavor up at the top menu and you can follow your way here. Okay, so that was my little rant about food waste. So let's get back to Dan and um, talk about some of the events that are coming up. You have any other upcoming events that maybe people can't donate here, but there'll be something that I know. Well, Investors Group is having their comedy event comedy coming list. event, yeah. their annual yeah, one, yeah. and that one usually ends up with a bunch of food. So I'll be, I guess I'll be seeing you in a yes, <laughs> the comedy yes. event again. The yeah. Investors Group is a wonderful two day two day event for us. It's just fabulous. Mm-hmm. Our volunteers have a good time. We talk to lots of wonderful folks there. Lots of wonderful food and donations are brought in. It's just a fabulous. Good and I said it's you know, it pretty much sells out every year. Too, it does which sell out which every is, year, which is a lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> exactly. Is there other uh, the Art of Dessert, of course, that everyone involved with. Art of Dessert is on November 2nd. You've been involved in that one. You know how exciting that is. Yes, I've already got roped into donating a pie to your pie oh, auction this year. I was just going to say, <laughs> I don't know if you knew that new this year was the Sandvik. It's the easiest pie competition. The it's easiest, so that's what it's called. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. Lori gave me the call or the email yeah, already. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we have, uh, so now we have the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cake bake-off and we have the uh, pie competition now plus the regular auction we have of course of fine spirits and art pieces and uh, we also have the uh the potato bar, which is something that maybe oh, that you guys are familiar potato. with. The mashed yes, potato mashed bar. potato bar. Everyone loves oh, it. I brought that in last year, and people just thought that was fabulous. And uh, the creativity of people, able to design your own piece of work on your own potatoes with your own toppings and your own gravies. Oh, people just love that. And well, and it's a great idea is because with the base of it, it's actually a very cost ac- it's cost efficient to actually set something up like that to feed everybody because basically you're just doing the mashed potatoes and the sauce and then whatever you just throw out toppings and people make their own you don't have to staff it aside from refilling it's a uh, it's one of those things i used to do in catering a few times too because <laughs> actually, it's a you'd be very attuned to exactly why we do that <laughs> exactly yeah and when people are having a few glasses of wine yes yeah, mashed potatoes go over yeah, real well mashed potatoes is a great little comfort food for mm-hmm. sure and uh So I just wanted to interject quickly before we continue with the conversation with Dan, talking about those comedy nights that he was referencing. Uh, Investors Group here in Canada is actually sponsoring comedy nights throughout the country. So if you have any interest in going to these comedy events that are raising money and collecting food for local food banks, you can contact your local Investors Group office just by looking at the website investorsgroup.com and then you can find who are who's your local um, representatives and offices there and they'll be able to give you the information of comedy nights or other charitable events that they're having for the food banks in your area. And as for the Art of Dessert event that's happening here in Sudbury, it's a great little fundraiser that I've been helping with uh, for the last number of years. 
Um, I used to donate appetizers for it. I've uh, bought cakes and other silent auction items, including uh, they have these really great things where they do auctions for really some high-end wines. Uh, That mashed potato bar is a new thing, which is a lot of fun. And this year, um, I'm donating a pie. I'm not going to tell you which pie, but if you're searching around my website and you see a pie that is just a showstopper, that might be your first clue to which pie I'll be donating this year. So unfortunately, I won't be able to attend that event this year because I'm actually at another event outside of Sudbury that time. But um, I will be there in spirit and, of course, in pie. And here's a little bit more about um, other things they have planned for the upcoming event. Probably uh, probably the official launch of the Community Kitchen is going to be into that evening. Oh, good. And it's possible that we may have a special guest speaker because we have Mr. Legal Thief just coming in from the Kindness Diary to do a presentation of something that morning at 10 o'clock. Very nice. Yes, get a little yes, preview. Get yeah, a little preview. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so he, so, uh, he, he kind of like to see what it's all about, if his schedule allows. So it's really a very, uh, very exciting opportunity. Um, he's, he's graciously donated several of his books from the kind of oh. diaries for auction that evening so wonderful but i think his message his kindness message to the city at 10 o'clock that morning at all nations church okay. is going to be absolutely a fabulous message especially for the young people that are there So one of the things about Thanksgiving and the Christmas season, of course, is this is the time where we're really starting to do the drives or you're really yeah. starting to do the events because I'm you're usually trying to plan ahead. Exactly. And I'm guessing your busy time of year is January, the January, February? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Well, it's pretty crazy in the sense of sorting through everything that comes in. The collection okay, of yep. the product is actually through October, November, and December. December, okay. Uh, one of the big things that's coming up, of course, is the St. Charles Fill the Bus campaign, which is very, very exciting. That yeah, we thank the students for St. Charles doing that they've done that for I think two more than two and a half decades it's just an absolutely fabulous uh, opportunity uh, Patty Madero and her crew over there are just amazing young people great to work with she's Love an amazing principal that lady that's she for sure. is for sure for sure and their campaign is actually running from Thursday October 19th to um, October the 24th so it's very there's exciting. an entire week to get in on the fun yeah an entire <laughs> week and you know what it's so easy to do because basically you're going to do your groceries if the bus is at the grocery store where you're doing your brushes throw in one extra can that's all it takes that's all it takes you know now some of the stores will do a lot more than that they'll offer you bags that you can buy for five dollars or ten dollars yeah the those pre-bank. are actually a very good deal because they usually have anywhere a five dollar has about ten dollars of food a ten dollar has about you know fifteen to twenty dollars worth of food in it. so and, and it's the stuff that we've told them that we need so mm-hmm. it really takes even even that decision is taken away from you if you want you just pick one up and throw it into the bucket and throw it into the bus and you're there. Every food bank is looking for the help at this time of the year and they're going to appreciate any help you can give them, whether it be food, whether it be a donation of funds, whether it be time, whether it'll be volunteering to do a little bit of collection for something. Or the other nice thing, if you really want to help and make it nice and easy on yourself, just go to your work and say, hey, let's have a food drive on Tuesday. Everybody bring in something. You know what I mean? Some places really take this to the extreme. Often they'll go, uh, let's uh, brown bag our lunch on a particular day, and any money you would spend going out for lunch, donate to the food bank. And we can give you the paperwork and receipt packages and things to put that together if you're interested in doing that. That's a fast phone call. That's a 10 minute around the coffee cooler discussion with your people. And a date is picked and it's done. Yes. <laughs> you know, and it's over, right? It's a one day thing. But it, it makes a tremendous difference. It makes a tremendous difference in what happens here at the food bank. So that was a couple of great tips on different ways that you can support your local food bank. And for those in Canada, I'm actually going to provide the link in the show notes for you to be able to find where your local food bank is so you can keep track of any events, food drives, or other ways that you can donate or help for this Thanksgiving to Christmas season. And I just wanted to make one other point. I was really um, inspired or touched by that whole idea of the gentleman who has the Kindless Diaries book, who is going to be donating some of the prizes uh, to their auction for the Art of Dessert. So I am going to include the link for the Kindness Diaries book as well, and and the details on the show, which is, of course, a Netflix original. And then um, I have one question for you that I thought would be suitable to conclude our interview. Okay. Uh, At this time of year, Dan, what are you thankful for? 
Well, my cell phone. Yes. Well, I just got my, uh, I don't know why, I've got six beautiful grandchildren, but I'm proud to say two more just joined us. With the twins. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so uh, very proud of that. Very proud of where my young my young people have been. Very proud of what they do in the community. They're all volunteers, same as their dad. They, they do what needs to be done. Uh, my my granddaughter is now, now is, is, uh, is is 19, and she, she's out there doing her work, doing her school, doing her volunteering. It's just uh, absolutely fabulous. Uh, of course, uh, my lovely wife and just my uh, my health and just this community in general. I am so blessed to be working in this community. You started a great <laughs> legacy with your family, right. through your kids and your grandchildren. And I think that the community in Sudbury has always been such a charitable community and they are now raising children and then newcomers are all getting in that same spirit. They are. So that uh, that just means that things are gonna look up. I'm absolutely positive about it. Isn't that the most perfect way to end a Thanksgiving episode? Makes you kind of thankful. So before I go into my closing here for this week's episode, I really wanted to kind of finish off with one of those table topics. So I actually found one that I thought was completely suitable for today, and it's from the Travel Kit. And the question of the day is, what's your favorite memory of childhood vacations? So because it is Thanksgiving weekend, we're being thankful, and it took me a few minutes to kind of recap some of my favorite memories when I was a kid. And vacations for me were not the big long distance things that I am so thankful and blessed that I get to do now, but they still had so much meaning to me. And I guess it was just our family camping trips. So it was one of those things that it was an ongoing annual getaway. I had cousins and aunts and uncles who all went to the same provincial park for you outside of Canada. That's a very big thing to be going to provincial parks here. And I remember the bonfires. I remember coming back from the beach till the very last time that my parents would let me stay out there and sitting around the campfire, telling funny stories, teasing each other, uh, making hot dogs over the fire and making um, mountain pies. And yes, you can send me a message if you haven't heard of mountain pies before, but just basically spending time together like that around the fire. Uh, My dad used to play the guitar. Uh, My grandmother played the accordion. Uh, We used to have the uh, park rangers running around basically telling us to tone it down. But it was always fun. And it's one of those things that I know that any of my cousins and aunts and uncles out there who are listening are uh, fondly remembering as well. So sometimes it's just good things to be thankful. And a vacation just means spending time with the ones you love. So if you have any favorite childhood vacation memories that you'd like to share with our listeners, you can send them to me by email at flavor at stephaniepichet.ca. You can send me a message on the Flying for Flavor Facebook page. You can send me a message via Instagram or Twitter or on my personal stephaniepichet.ca Facebook page. So there's many ways to reach me and I will take all submissions because I think uh, sharing stories about food, family and fun is uh, always a good thing. So in closing, of course, it's time for me to do my thanks uh, for the end. I started off with my thanks for the lovely blessings in my life, but I wanted to send out some personal thanks. First of all, of course, thanks so much to Dan Exelon and his entire team and volunteers at the Sudbury Food Bank for letting me come and visit during this really busy time for them. It's always a treat to go there and I see how much they work, I see how much dedication their volunteers have, and it really inspires me to always want to do more. I wanted to, of course, thank my friends and family for being my guinea pigs all of these years and being my support with all of these crazy new endeavors that I'm constantly coming up with. Uh, Your faith in me is what keeps me going. And of course, thanks to you for listening, for sharing this podcast with your friends and family. And also thank you for any support that you can show for your local food bank. So until the next time, I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I will be chatting with you again next week.